In a cross-sectional design, data is collected at one point in time and each person is assessed only once. The information gathered can include disease outcomes, risk factors, demographics, and a variety of other information types. It is used for describing the frequency of health characteristics in a population as well as determining relationships between characteristics and other variables. Conceptually, you can think of it like a snapshot study. It can be compared to a still photograph because it describes particular groups of people at a single hypothetical point in time. Here is a diagram of the cross-sectional study design. Exposures and health outcomes are measured at the same time. Everything under the bar is measured at that one point in time. Analytically, you can measure the prevalence of the risk factor or the outcome, and you can make comparisons of these between groups. The data can be used to determine the prevalence of risk factors or health conditions. It can also be used to measure associations between exposures to risk factors and outcomes using a prevalence or odds ratio. Here is an example of a cross-sectional design in action, the YRBS survey. The Youth Risk Behavior Survey is a biannual survey of high school students in the United States. During one class period, students complete the survey, recording their responses directly on a computer scannable booklet or answer sheet. The survey includes almost 100 items assessing demographics, health risk behaviors, obesity, and other health-related topics. The graph here presents results from the 2007 survey regarding drug use before age 13 years, stratified by sex. This is an example of prevalence measures of health risk behaviors from a cross-sectional study. Here is an interpretation of the prevalence of having tried marijuana. In 2007, 11.2% .2 of male students and 5.2% of female students had tried marijuana for the first time before age 13 years. A cross-sectional study design is useful since it is relatively quick and inexpensive. For this reason, they are particularly helpful for program planning, policy development, and hypothesis generating activities. However, with only a one-time assessment, you can't truly determine a cause-effect relationship. The temporal relationship between exposure and outcome is not established when they are measured at the same time. The cross-sectional design can only determine an association and therefore cannot predict risk of future events. Also, a one-time assessment will only capture survivors, people who haven't died. If an exposure is associated with a condition that causes mortality, you won't capture the relationship in a cross-sectional study. The dead can't respond that they were exposed to the risk factor. With rare conditions, an enormous sample size would be required to collect enough data to document the prevalence or associations. This is rarely feasible to accomplish.